Okay, so for this week's class, uh, we're going to be talking about crowdfunding, basically an introduction to and basic elements of. Next week, we will continue with crowdfunding, and at that point, you'll actually get hands-on with it. We'll have you develop, start developing a crowdfunding campaign. This week, we're just going to kind of give you the behind-the-scenes of that. Um, I have last week's Twitter assignment graded. Feedback for that is on the LMS. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I want to start today asking a real, real basic question is, what do you guys know about crowdfunding? Does that word mean anything to you? Yes, Michelle, I'll start with you. Uh, is that kind of like Kickstarter? Yeah, yeah, Kickstarter is one of the crowdfunding platforms we're going to look at. Okay. So then what do you know about Kickstarter? So it basically means someone uploads their idea to try to get support from peers. Yeah, that's a good, a good start to it. Matt, what do you know about crowdfunding? I know um, you know a little bit more about it. I know that um, it's a relevant way for bands to stay in direct touch with their fans. Yeah, it's direct communication with people. Yep. It's and, an important part of it. It's having a good campaign is of utmost importance in securing funds for projects. Yeah, and we're, today what we're actually going to talk about is a lot of the elements to building you know, that campaign. Uh, you mentioned bands. That Amanda Palmer is someone, an artist in the last couple of years that, that became very famous for her success on Kickstarter. Uh, we might look at Amanda's campaign. We are going to look at Zach Braff, the actor. He made a movie, uh, crowdfunding that film. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit. LeVar Burton. Reading LeVar Rainbow. Burton, The Reading Rainbow. Yeah, well, any other campaigns you guys can think of? that? There's been a lot of tech. We'll look at what types of projects work for crowdfunding. Uh, and tech has been very big. There was a, you know, the Apple Watch is very hot right now. But about a year ago, a company launched a watch called Pebble. And that watch, I believe, raised $10 million. Uh, and it was kind of a precursor. It just wasn't an Apple product. Heather, what do you know about crowdfunding? Well, as Michelle talked about Kickstarter, GoFundMe is yes. something that I've seen. But yep. that's about the extent of what I know. Sure. And you know, GoFundMe differs from Kickstarter. And, and one way we're going to talk about is that you can either fund personal mm -hmm. projects, right. you know, so maybe you have a dog that needs surgery and you don't have money, right. you know, to, to fund the surgery. You can go out and ask uh, the general public to help you with that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, you know, if it's not a personal project, uh, it's usually something creative. And those are the, the you know the two kind of things, and there's different platforms. Kickstarter, for example, you can't raise personal funds; you'd have to go to GoFundMe or something mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, that, that's a, that's a good start uh, to our discussion today. You know, the, the first basic question I have for you is, is is crowdfunding. What is it? And you know, simply put, crowdfunding is the process of asking the general public for donations that provides startup capital for new ventures. So what do we see there? Asking the general public for donations. Mm -hmm. um, how does that differ from trying to raise funds to start a business or trying to raise funds to start a project the traditional ways? It's not going to a bank. It's going, it's to, not going to a bank, the, correct. The public. You know, you're, you're not going in and dressing up and asking for a loan. Um, the sales process to the audience is probably a little different. Uh, I think the Kickstarter and crowdfunding campaigns are a little bit more of a sales process. They don't necessarily have to be backed up with as much uh, financial security as a, tr a traditional you know, business model might. Um, who, what's different about who you're asking? I see the word donation and I think you know, you're just, you're giving it. You're not taking anything yes. back. You're getting anything back. Huge key to this. So you are asking people to give you money in return for something. We haven't kind of got quite what they're going to get in return yet. Um, but when you start a business, who watches Shark Tank? Anybody watch Shark Tank? Okay. So on Shark Tank, someone will take their project 
and they will stand in front of five investors and they will try to sell their idea and have those investors buy an equity stock in their, you know, let's say they're trying to start a new bicycle company. So they go up to Shark Tank people, tell them why they're a good product, how they're going to make money, what they're going to do with the investment. What if someone on the panel of Shark Tank is interested in investing, let's say they're going to throw $100,000 at that company, what do they get in return? An investment in the company. Sure. They get equity, yeah. So they get a certain percentage of that company back, you know, which is, which is kind of important. Um, different on the donation crowdfunding platform, there is no equity. You give up no equity. So that, that's a pretty important difference uh, here. I'd say another big difference is that for the most part, you're not necessarily asking people that have huge amounts of money for something different. You know, you're oftentimes asking the average person. Uh, pros and cons <clears throat> of crowdfunding. Uh, the, the biggest pro is that you have 100% control. Since you're not giving up equity, you're retaining 100% ownership, there's really nobody that can tell you how to do this, how to run your business. If you're smart, you'll take suggestions, right? But, again, if you're not going to, you know, the second pro there is, is re you retain 100% equity in your business. Uh, that's really key and really different from how business has traditionally been raised and funded and, you know, the, the crowdfunding platform and idea really took off in 2009. Uh, I think in 2009, there was close to half a million dollars in crowdfunding raised. In 2014, estimates are that that number reached 10 billion. So there's been quite a steep growth curve uh, on people trying to fund things through crowdsourcing. The cons? <clears throat> and here again is one thing we haven't talked about yet, but uh, a crowdfunding campaign runs over a short period of time. You have to set a schedule for it. That could be 15 days, that could be 30 days, usually maximum of 60 days. That puts a lot of pressure on you to raise the funds in that amount of time. And the campaigns take a lot of effort in that time. Because the other con is that Crowdfunding itself is not marketing. So we'll, we'll look at some different platforms today, like you mentioned Kickstarter, and let's say you choose Kickstarter to launch the bicycle company, the same example that I, I mentioned for, for Shark Tank. If you build a campaign on Kickstarter and you're trying to raise $100,000 for your business, you're going to go through and make a video, you're going to go up and put down different awards that people can purchase, and hopefully over the, the course of 30 days, you're going to raise that money. Well, all you've really done is put a website on the internet. Haven't really done anything beyond that. That website now creates an opportunity for you to market to. And that becomes the real difficult part uh, of, of crowdfunding is you have to find an audience. You know, Matt mentioned bands are, are doing a lot of crowdfunding. If a band has a very small audience, it might be hard for them to crowdfund something because they're going to have to ask a lot of a small group. If you're a band like Radiohead who has millions of fans, all of a sudden this becomes a real easy model to raise $1,000, to raise $10,000, you know, because you have such a large audience. Uh, you know, in that case, the marketing is easy because you've already built the list that you're marketing to. So, now those, those are the keys right there. Total control and retaining 100% equity, definitely the biggest pros, and also what things that differentiate them from, from traditional business models that we've talked about, you know, over the last decade to 50 years. Uh, and then the cons are, are that timeline. It can be stressful and, and time consuming, and the idea that you really haven't done anything by putting up this website. It just exists in a vacuum. You now have to figure out a way to, to get people's attention with that. Let's look at a 
couple different crowdfunding sites. So this lists the top 10 crowdfunding sites. And as you can see, <coughs> before they go into the top 10, they just separate out three right away. Uh, GoFundMe, which you had mentioned. Kickstarter, which Michelle had mentioned. And then Indiegogo. Those are the big three. Um, in 2014, both GoFundMe and Kickstarter raised almost half a million uh, on their projects. You can see in the important to know section, uh, we start to find some differentiators amongst the platforms themselves. Uh, I mentioned that Kickstarter, personal fundraising is not allowed. So you wouldn't be able to use that platform. You could only use that for creative projects. Uh, however, both Indiegogo and GoFundMe allow personal fundraising, but we start to see a bunch of numbers here. Uh, and the difference becomes Kickstarter will only take 5% of the money you raise. Indiegogo might take 9%. And the reason I say might is because this brings up yet another differentiator that's not listed here. Uh, there are two ways to raise money using a crowdfunding campaign. Does anyone have any idea what the options are, that the two options are for raising money? The first is an all-in model, meaning if I ask for $100,000, and I raise 99999 I get zero. I have to hit my goal, or I don't get any of the money. So it's high risk. For that, I usually give up 5% of the money. The other model, as opposed to the all-in model, is called the flex model, meaning I'm going to ask for $50,000, if I raise five, I get to keep the five. If I raise seven, I get to keep the seven. However, I'm going to pay 9%. I'm going to pay a higher rate on the money for that. Uh, and that starts to be when you look at options, you know, when you pick a project, and you're like, oh, I'd like to try to do this as a crowdfunding project. Uh, these are some of the important things you have to start looking at is, is it an all-in model? Is it a flex model? How much money are they going to take from me? You can start to see there's processing fees on top of all that stuff. Uh, some of the other sites that you may or may not have heard of. CrowdRise, Give Forward. Uh, Amanda Palmer, who we discussed a little bit earlier, who had a very successful Kickstarter campaign. In the last couple of years, she raised $1.3 million to put out a new album. She has now switched over to this group called Patreon. And she is trying to change already the world of crowdfunding, which is a pretty new thing. Um, Patreon allows her to say, all right, I don't know what I'm going to do this year, but I'd like to make some music. I'd like to make some art. I'd like to play some concerts. I'd like to do all these things. I would like you to pledge X amount of dollars per thing I do. And they put a cap on it so you don't, you know, you don't get crazy out. But maybe you want to give Amanda Palmer $3 for everything she does with a max of $12 per month. That means no matter what she does, if she makes a song, if she writes a poem, if she you know, paints a photo, if she plays a show, she puts that out into the world and you pay her $3 for it. She has already raised enough to basically make a salary of $250,000 this year. So that's, a, that's a, we're not going to really get into that model today, but it's interesting that as new as crowdfunding is, there's already people trying to find ways to you know, kind of change it and, and uh, make things new. If we look at what types of projects are being funded, this is just Kickstarter. So, Kickstarter, games, 
design projects, technology, film and video, music, food, publishing, fashion, art, comics. All different types of projects, mainly artistic in some way or another, you know, even tech. Um, you can hear, see here the number of projects launched. Looks like film and video was the most, 46,000 projects launched. Um, music's close behind with 38,000. And then the amount of money. Um, games have received the most amount of money, though they haven't launched the most amount of projects. So it's very popular for a <coughs> platform. Let's take a minute, and earlier I mentioned we'd look at a video to try to get an idea of exactly how these look. So this is the Kickstarter page that was developed for a film called Wish I Was Here, made by the actor Zach Braff. Probably know him from Scrubs. What was his first movie? We'll learn in the video when we watch. But we're going to look at all these different elements. But first I want to show you an example of what a Kickstarter video or a crowdfunding video might look like. Because the video is actually a, a big part uh, of what... Hi there, I'm Zach Braff. The most common question I get asked when I meet my fans around the globe or when I talk with you on Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit is, can I mount you and yell eagle? The second most asked question is, why haven't you written and directed another film since Garden State? The answer is a bit complicated, Garden but State. in its simplest form, financing. I have a new screenplay that I've written with my brother Adam entitled Wish I Was Here, and I'm facing a big problem. There are money guys willing to finance the project, but in order to protect their investment, they're insisting on having a final cut. Also, they want to control how the film is cast. So let's say I wanted Jim Parsons to play the role of my friend. Okay, the money folks might say, what if instead of your best friend, he was sort of a sexy pool boy? And what if that sexy pool boy was played by Justin Bieber? I want to play a sexy pool boy. There is no sexy pool boy in the movie. I want you to play my friend. Why can't your friend also be a sexy pool boy? Why would I be friends with a sexy pool boy? How did you get in here anyway? I repelled through the skylight. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Yeah, okay. Just so you know, though, I am willing to tan and do push-ups. <laughs> or let's say, for example, you have the funniest idea for a cameo for Donald Faison. The money folks will say, we love Donald, but first we'd like you to offer that role to Denzel Washington. Hold on, who are these money people? I will kill them! Okay, calm down. How did you get in here? You gave me the key. I know, but I keep changing the lock. Listen, money people, I'm the one who told Denzel to cry in glory. He was like, I'm not gonna cry. And I was like, Denzel, you cry, it's an automatic Oscar. No tears, no Oscar. Guess who cried in glory? No, this is completely off topic. Could you get out of here? I'm trying to do something. Yeah, sure. Come on, Fresca. In the fridge. That brings us to Kickstarter. After I saw how the amazing Veronica Mars fans rallied around that project in a mind-blowing way, I couldn't help but think, like so many others, maybe this could be a new paradigm for filmmakers who want to make smaller, personal films without having to sign away any of their artistic freedom. You see, most people don't know this, Garden State never ever would have gotten made had it not been for a sole investor who wasn't even in the entertainment business. He was just a fan of Scrubs and he believed in me and my script. But most importantly, it became a very special film to a lot of you who did understand what I was trying to say and related to my personal story in a way I never could have imagined was possible. Basically, Wish I Was Here is a dramatic comedy in the tone of Garden State starring and directed by me. I wrote Garden State about a time in my life when I was feeling overwhelmed and lost in my 20s. I guess you could say Wish I Was Here is about the next chapter of your life in your 30s. Not a sequel in story, but it's a continuation of the tone. I will say there's a whole Comic-Con component as my character's brother decides to enter a cosplay contest to win over the heart of a sexy young furry. I'd be happy to help you at Comic-Con. I practically live there. I could be like a special advisor. That would be amazing. Chris Hardwick, how did you get in here? Oh, Donald let me in. He's really drunk. I can't feel my feet! See, without Kickstarter, I'd probably have to cut the Comic-Con scenes. We wouldn't be able to afford to shoot there, and the money people would be like, Comic-Con's kind of dorky, we need sexy. What if those scenes took place at like a Las Vegas whorehouse? I will totally still be your advisor. <laughs> okay, can you get out of here? What do people do? Donald, stop letting people in! You didn't tell me you had accent! 
We've created some amazing incentives on this page. Everything from getting your own personal copy of the script to sitting right next to me at the premiere, with or without my hand resting gently on your leg. Now, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea if raising money on here is going to work, but I think it's worth a try. I want to bring you, my fans, the truest representation of what I have in my brain. That means I'll have the final cut of what ends up in the movie, and I get to only cast the actors I think are perfect for the roles. Please help me make another movie for you like Garden State with no compromises. I promise I'll put everything I have into it, and I won't let you down. Thanks for listening. Okay, two questions to put on the board. Who's he trying to appeal to with that video? Fans of Garden State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fans of his previous work, right? Mm -hmm. He knows he has an audience built up. And why is he going the crowdfunding route? Because he has that audience. Because he has that audience, one. But he gave some very specific reasons in the video. It's to maintain control. creative control. To maintain creative control, perfect. So. When you're talking about things like movies and film and, and digital, all these creative outlets, you know, one issue that creative people run up to is the money people want input. Right? It's like, well, I gave you a million dollars for this film, I'd like this person to be in the film. Or, I'd like to write one of the songs on your record. Probably not a good idea. Uh, so. I think that the idea of creative control is a big reason why artists are doing this. Uh, I'm not going to show the Amanda Palmer video, but you know she kind of goes through the same thing. She goes through and says, look, I was on a major record label. I got all this money and came away with nothing. I'm standing here asking you, my fans. I think she originally asked for $100,000 to make a record uh, and get it directly out to them. And she ended up raising $1.3 which really changed, uh, you know, what, what she had. Uh, but the video, did you find the video appealing? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, as we start to look at now, we're going to look at a few elements of, of what there is to a Kickstarter campaign. There's probably none more important than that video, which can be challenging for people that don't make videos. Uh, uh, the other thing that's probably most important is if we look down the right hand side of the page are the rewards. The rewards are how your fans give you money. So when Zach says, hey, please fund my film, we know that we aren't going to have an equity stake. We aren't buying into his film. It's not like, oh, I, I gave him some money, I now own 10% of the film. I'm not going to own anything. Which means he's got to give me something back that has value to me. And again, knowing his audience, he can do that. For $10, you get an online production diary of the film being made. For $20, you'll get soundtracks and playlists that he personally puts together. Uh, for $30, you can attend a special backer's screening uh, of the film. For $40, you get a t-shirt. Uh, and one thing about crowdfunding is people are willing to overpay for things. So $40 for a t-shirt sounds crazy, but if you're really into Zach Braff and you love Garden State and you want to see him make a new movie the way he wants to make it, many people will be willing. How many people are willing to give him $40? 9,952 people bought a $40 t-shirt. Uh, frameable art prints. Uh, a director's chair. Or oh, the back to a director's chair. Uh, advanced film screening and, Q screening and Q and A in Los Angeles. Now that one's specific because they're not going to fly you to Los Angeles, right? You've got to be in LA. But 449 people, you know, backed him on that. Uh, they did the same thing in New York, same thing in Chicago, same thing in London. So those advanced screenings, you know, worked well. Toronto, San Francisco. What else here when we get down to the hundred dollars? A limited edition vinyl version of the soundtrack. He knows many of his fans are, are music geeks, so the idea of giving them something like that. Um, let's go down to the very bottom. He has, I mean, he has easily a hundred different reward packages you could buy. Uh, one person 
paid $10,000 for the film slate. One person paid $10,000 to be in the film. Be a cast member of the film. Uh, three people paid $9,000 for an end credit in the film. So, you know, all these different things. And, you know, these are creative people for the most part. And I think the more creative you can get with the rewards, uh, the better off you're going to be. Uh, so the rewards become a very important element of this pitch. The video becomes a very more important element. Um, you have to write a script or a pitch. You know, so, so that also becomes a, a very important element. What is the most obvious element of putting up a campaign that I'm not mentioning? The goal. The goal, that's a good one. You have to decide, how much money am I going to ask for? Is 5000 enough or too much? Is 10000 enough or too much? Is a million enough or too much? You know, that's, especially if you're doing a Kickstarter, which is an all or nothing campaign. Uh, he asked for $2 million, raised $3 million. The one I'm thinking of, though, is the idea. You have to have an idea. Like, you know, you can't just go out. Oh, I'm going to say this, and, and I'm going to be wrong, but you can't just go on Kickstarter and try to raise money for anything. The last year, somebody raised $50,000 to make potato salad. So uh, it's not exactly true that you can't do anything, though that was more of a, you know, kind of a publicity campaign. Uh, and then the last thing is that, as I mentioned earlier, this is just a web page on the internet. And we all know there's no limit to the number of end pages, to, of uh, web pages on the internet. So you have to turn in a marketing plan. How is Zach Braff going to get the word out? He probably has a mailing list, you know. If you're Zach Braff, you have a huge mailing list. If you're Radiohead, you have a huge mailing list. But what if you're a local band here in Madison that has a mailing list of 100 people? You're obviously going to go out to those 100 people. Maybe you're going to share it on your Facebook page, which has 250 followers. You really need word of mouth. You know, that's the projects that really succeed, like the Reading Rainbow Project, um, or the Pebble Watch, or Amanda Palmer, they really benefit from word of mouth, and you know you have to create some kind of viral marketing uh, for them. So, one minute here. Well, technology catches up. All right. So we reviewed a couple things today. Let's, let's take a look at what we talked about, just to kind of give ourselves an idea. Again, define crowdfunding. What is it? Michelle. It's reaching out to the general public um, to get proper backing to promote your idea. Exactly. Matt, pros and cons. Uh, pros, keeping creative control. Mm -hmm. Big one. Cons, um, effort, the amount of marketing you might have to put effort in. Effort, and also you don't know if you're, it's, it's a, it's a nerve-wracking. Yeah, high risk. High risk, yeah. I'd you don't say. know if you're going to reach your goal or not. Um, we looked a little bit at different platforms, right? We looked at that top ten list uh, of platforms. You have an assignment this week, which is going to have you delve into more uh, of those different platforms. Uh, I mentioned two financial models for crowdfunding. Remember what those were, Heather? The all-in. Correct. And... I don't it's called flexible. flexible. But, so yeah, you, you know, with, with crowdfunding, you're either, I'm asking for this amount of money, I get it all or I get nothing. Uh, or the flex plan where, well, I'll get what I get, but I'm going to give the company more. I might have to give them 10% compared to 5%. Uh, we looked at the, the Zach Braff project. Um, and then, in the end here, we, we kind of talked about the different elements, the video, the marketing, the pitch, the rewards. Uh, all of those things become very important, 
And we did a pretty quick analysis of that this week, like I said, with your assignment. Uh, you're going to dig deeper into that. Um, your assignment for this week is up on the LMS. It's called the Crowdfunding Platform Assignment. I have given you five types of projects, which you can read through. And then I have listed, <laughs> bless you, I have listed ten crowdfunding platforms, which I want you to do uh, a little investigation into. You're going to research those platforms and decide the best platform for each project. Uh, you have to use five different platforms. So you can't just say Kickstarter is good for all five of them. Um, I'm forcing you to use five different platforms. And then the last thing we're going to do is before we leave today, I want everyone to take out a piece of paper and I want you to write down three things that stood out to you that you learned about crowdfunding today. And then I want you to write one question, the main question. You could have two, you could have three. What questions do you have about crowdfunding after this you know, brief introduction going into next week? So take a couple minutes at the end here. Write down your ideas of, of what you learned. Write down a question or two. We're going to start the class next week by going over those questions. And then, as I said, we'll, we'll dig deeper into it next week, and you guys are actually going to get a little more hands-on and start developing an actual project. Sound good? Good. Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody.